Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential, a very irrationally exponential equation with complex numbers. So we have z to the power pi equals i, that's such an irrational power of a complex number. Haha. -ha. Let's go ahead and solve for z. And you might be thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to raise both sides to the power of 1 over pi, and then I am done. Well, it's not that simple. We're going to go into a little bit of depth, and obviously, you have to think about it. Like, what is i to the power of 1 over pi, right? That might be a solution, but we need to simplify this. Anyways, let's go ahead and do the following, and I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. And if you know of a third way to do it, like replacing z with a plus bi, I don't know how that's going to work, you can let me know. Or let us know in the comment section down below. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave the z to the pi alone, because that looks really weird. But I'm going to go ahead and replace i with something. What can I do for i? Well, I can kind of write the i as e to the power i times pi over 2, right? If you think about it, in the argon plane, i is represented by the number 0, 1, or the point. This is real, this is imaginary, so it's pure imaginary. This is i. And the, the segment that contains it to the origin is basically it's uh, that distance is called the modulus, which is 1. And the angle it makes, if you think of it as a vector as well, would be pi over 2. But I can just add 2 pi to it and write it as 5 pi over 2 and add another 2 pi, add another 2 pi, so on and so forth. 9 pi over 2, 13 pi over 2, and so on and so forth. But we don't really need that all of these angles listed. Instead, we could just add 2 pi n as a multiple of 2 pi to it, where n is an integer. Zalen for z, right? Okay. And Zalen means counting, and, well, I guess it depends on the pronunciation. I'm not exactly sure about the difference, but uh, I think that word means counting and also number, or numbers, maybe. Anyways, I took Germany a while ago, and I forgot. So this is the situation. Now, we have an exponential on the right-hand side, a complex exponentiation. We don't have it on the left, so let's go ahead and Com complex exponentiate this number. Can we do that? Sure. Remember that z to the pi can be written as e to the power pi ln z. Because any complex number z to the w can be written as e to the power w ln z by definition. That's the definition for the complex exponentiation. That's how it's defined. And obviously ln z is multi-valued because it has a complex piece, so this is going to be multi-valued. Okay? Makes sense? That's why we kind of include the 2 pi n in there. So let's go ahead and replace z to the pi with e to the power pi ln z, and set it equal to e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Awesome. n is an integer again. Let's simplify this. How do we? We can kind of forget about the e's and write this as pi ln z. And on the right hand side, I can kind of factor out a pi and write this as 2n plus 1 half. I know I switched the terms around because I always want to write the whole piece first and then the fraction. It's just a habit. It's You can call it OCD as well. Anyways, so this is what we got. And what are we trying to solve for? Too many variables? No. n is an integer. We don't care about it. We can change it, vary it, whatever. Or n, n could be fixed, like you can replace n with 0 or 1, whatever. But we care about z, so let's go ahead and solve for z. And to solve for z, let's solve for ln z. ln z, wait a minute, I can cross out the pi's and get the ln z directly from here, i times 2n plus 1 half. At this point, you can go and replace n with 0 if you want, just to get a simple answer ln z is going to be i times 1 half. How nice. So how do I convert this to z? Easy. Easy, right? Like e z. 
you can write this as z equals e to the ln z. And since ln z is one, i times 1 half, this is just going to be e to the power i times 1 half. Hmm. What does this remind you? This should remind you Euler's formula, hopefully. And what did Euler say? Euler said e to the power i theta equals cosine theta plus i times sine theta. Therefore, e to the power i times 1 half is going to be cosine of 1 half, which is theta, plus i times sine of 1 half. What is 1 half? In radians, whatever that answer is, pi over something, whatever, a fraction of pi, but that's what it is. You can evaluate it, you can put it into a calculator, but this is the exact form. Isn't that crazy? Yes. Now, this, we just found a particular solution though, right? In general, you can definitely replace 1 half with 2n plus 1 half and write the solutions as follows. This would be the general solution because there are infinitely many branches, solutions, whatever, cuts, whatever you want to call that. I don't know, but this is what it is. So remember Euler's formula, super duper helpful in these situations. So we were able to get z in standard form like a plus bi, great, because that's the name of this channel and that's super important, right? But that's the answer. But guess what? n could be something else, like n could be 1, then you're going to get a different answer. n could be 2, n could be, in, um, not infinity, but n could be 7, whatever, negative 18. You can make it up and you'll get a solution every time. Make sense? And I'll show you some solutions towards the end because I got them from move from alpha. You can check it out. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second solution. I don't know if you're going to find the solution very different from the first one, but let me know. And if you have a better way, again, all the time, as always, let me know. z to the power pi is equal to i. What am I going to do? First, I want to use absolute values on both sides. And why am I doing this? First of all, think about it. If z is equal to w, then of course their absolute values are also equal, right? Because we're talking about the same thing. So let's absolute value both sides. And notice that the absolute value of i is 1. We just talked about it. Remember, that's the modulus. And then z to the power pi, we can take out the pi. And then this tells us that, hey, the absolute value of z must be 1. Why? Because it can only be 1 if the base is 1. Remember, absolute value of z is a non-negative real number. So if it's a real number, it has to be 1. Make sense? Even if the exponent is so weird that it's an irrational number, a special case of irrationals. Anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. Since the uh, modulus of z is 1, and z can be written as modulus of z times e to the i theta, where theta is the argument, I can basically write z as e to the power i theta, and then z to the pi is just going to be e to the i theta to the power pi, which is e to the power i theta pi. Great. And then this is equal to e to the power i times pi over 2, because that's what e is equal to. Remember, z to the pi was equal to e. Everything is equal. Obviously, I just simplified it and took the principal branch for this. And from here, we can kind of cancel out the i's, and we get, we cancel out the pi's, pretty much everything, and we end up with theta equals 1 half, and then z is e to the i theta, so it's going to be e to the i times 1 half. And let's go ahead and take a look at some other solutions. Yay, if you replace n with different values. Wait a minute, how did you get minus i sine? Well, yes, if theta is negative 3 halves, right? Of course. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.